Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Justin Riley, and we have a fantastic show for you today. We're going to be joined by a very unique toy store later in the program. Plus, we're going to learn a little bit about shopping for diapers and kids' clothes and where you can do that. But first, I am joined now by Kim Mitchell from Renaissance Learning. Kim, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good it's to great to be here. Yeah, good to have you here. So tell us a little bit about Renaissance Learning. Renaissance Learning is an educational software um, company based in Wisconsin Rapids with an office here in Madison. Um, we help accelerate learning for children. It's a great mission. Um, we sell to um, schools and to districts um, our products, uh, which are assessments, um, which help children to um, become better educated and to accelerate at reading and math. Very cool. So you guys work with, um, I mean, do you work with both school districts and like uh, parents and kids? Or is it just primarily with the schools? Primarily with schools, but we do, um, we can work with parents in terms of the teachers work with parents through our products. Or, you know, we offer the products online as well and, um, you know, for our own employees and they can go and access them and so they could give the actual assessments to their children. But primarily teachers and schools Sure. We work with them, principals um, who actually buy the products, and um, so we work with a variety of people. Very interesting. Very interesting. So uh, you've been. Uh, we talked a little bit before uh, the uh, show started today, and you said that you'd been there for about three months now. Right. What do you love most so far about working at Renaissance and Learning? Renaissance is, has great people, um, and I was drawn to the company uh, for the mission, as well as the leadership um, that work there. Um, just uh, fun, people who are passionate about their work, um, they enjoy it. Um, you can just feel the energy in, at, at the company. Um, you know, you come in every day, you know you're making a difference, um, especially in a student's life, um, or helping a teacher um, get better at their job. Yeah, absolutely. It's all, all about self-improvement and, and uh, uh, learning how to do things better and learning, learning more, growing, right. growth. Growth. The growth is important. Absolutely. So speaking of growth, as you think about um, the future and the growth of uh, Renaissance Learning, uh, you're going to be obviously needing to hire some more people. So talk to us a little bit about the types of people that you're looking for to hire at, at Renaissance Learning. In Madison, we have an inside sales group. And right now, we have 10 jobs open um, for campaign specialists. And would love for, for folks to come and apply. Um, those are great positions. Um, you get the opportunity to talk to teachers, to schools, um, and to sell our products, as well as we look for technologists, research people, um, data scientists. Uh, we have a mix of folks um, in the Madison area. So not just one type of individual or one group of um, folks in this, in this um, building here, but we have um, multiple groups. Yeah, a wide variety. And so you, you mentioned, um, you had said that the campaign Specialists. Campaign specialists, and yes. those are the folks that are actually going to go to the schools and talk to uh, talk to the school districts about you know um, uh, using some of the products from Renaissance Learning. Is that correct? They actually sell the products over the phone. Oh, they oh okay. Oh, yep, they sell the products over the phone, and they work with our um, with our territory uh, reps or our field reps in terms of actually you know getting renewals and um, selling new business. Got it. Got it. Well, very cool. Very cool. So now you're the chief people officer. Tell me about that job. What, is it, what does that mean? What, what are your job duties? Well, my job is responsible for really um, all of HR. So you can think okay. about it as, you know, it's another term for um, a CHRO or chief sure. human resource officer. Sure. But one of my main um, objectives is, is to help build the culture and to help transform the culture as we scale the business and as we grow. Awesome. And uh, if you could leave viewers with one thought, one thing that you would want the general public to know about Renaissance Learning, what would it be? Renaissance Learning is a, is a fabulous company to work for. I would leave one thought with you, is that we um, are a mission-based company and not every day you can go to work and help improve um, children's lives and um, Renaissance, at Renaissance you can do that. Kim Mitchell, Chief People Officer at Renaissance Learning, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm joined by our very dear friend, Dr. Marsha Schaefer from Spring Creek Family Chiropractic in Lodi. Dr. Marsha, welcome back to the program. 
Thank you. So good to have you here again. So uh, you're going to be talking to us about the five keys of boosting fertility and having a healthy pregnancy. Yes. So talk to us a little bit, uh, you know, first and foremost, what do you feel is the most important thing a couple should do as they're thinking about becoming parents? Well, they should definitely get a nervous system check. You know, your nervous system controls, coordinates, regulates every system in your body, including your hormone system. As a chiropractor, we're trained to locate, detect, and correct what we call subluxation, which is interference in that normal nerve function. So if your nerves are working properly and your nerve system is working properly, your hormones have the best chance to work properly, which is going to take you through fertility. It's going to take you through pregnancy. Um, and we've had, we've had a tremendous amount of success just making sure baseline, your nervous system is working. That's fantastic. And so that really is kind of where the whole idea of holistic medicine comes mm -hmm. from. It's literally like this is sort of the base for everything that's in your body, your whole body. Right. So very, right. very cool. Do you have any suggestions, uh, dietary suggestions for uh, uh, parents to be? Yeah, well, sometimes it's as important as what you make sure you have in your diet as much as what you don't. Right. So the things I have my couples stay away from are things like processed dairy, uh, wheat, because those are very inflammatory. They're going right. to mess with your hormones. They're not going to not going to help you function your best, but making sure to get things like avocado and coconut oil and fresh fruits and veggies, your local stuff, support your CSAs and Willie Street and all those kind of local places that are going to make sure your produce is fresh. Absolutely. And, you know, you're listing all these foods. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the nutrients that are in these foods and what types of nutrients uh, women who are uh, thinking about getting pregnant should uh, be consuming before, during, and after pregnancy? Yeah, well, the nutrients that are in the food, I mean, it's just great. You've got a lot of different sterols and antioxidants and just great things. But some other essential nutrients that are required, we don't always make by ourselves. In Wisconsin, here where it's cold, uh, vitamin D is a requirement for mom and dad. There's a lot of research out there on the, the improvement that it makes for, for fertility. Um, also, omega-3s, good fatty acids. Um, another essential nutrient, not so much food, but getting enough water. A lot of people don't realize we should be drinking half of our body weight in ounces every single day. It takes 32 ounces just for normal GI function. So to just gastrointestinal, it's 32 ounces. So to think you have all of these other systems that have to work, very, very important to get adequate water. And the last would be adequate sleep. A lot of people take melatonin, and that actually interferes with ovulation. So you really? don't want to be taking melatonin, mom or dad, if you're looking to have a healthy pregnancy. Wow. So, and melatonin though, that's kind of like the, the natural uh, sleep hormone, is it not? It's still a hormone though. Right. So anytime you put one hormone in, you're, you're adapting and changing all of the rest of the hormones in the body. Wow. <laughs> wow. So going back to the whole water thing, um, you're saying that if a person weighs 200 pounds, they should be drinking 100 ounces of water every day. Correct. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of water to drink. I better get going here on this. So um, uh, talk to us a little bit about stress relief and why that's really important uh, for people who are wanting to become pregnant. Yeah, well, our bodies don't understand real versus perceived stress. So if a lion is chasing you or if you're stressed out because you can't get pregnant, your body is going to send out the same stress hormones. Cortisol, which is one of your main stress hormones, feeds off of progesterone. And progesterone is what you need for a healthy pregnancy. So if you've got really high cortisol levels and your adrenaline and your insulin, all of those are very pro-inflammatory. So they're going to cause a lot of inflammation, which is going to not let you ovulate properly and not let you have a, a normal cycle during the month. So very, very important. And they say it's cliche, but it's so true. It's so important to re reduce stress. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's interesting how you talk about real versus perceived stress. That's just a kind of an interesting topic. We could probably have a whole other interview <laughs> about that topic. So um, what do you suggest any sort of um, testing for women who are wanting to become pregnant? If so, like what, what do you suggest? Well, my first, I have a baseline. Every 120 days, your eggs turn over. So women have the ability to change their fertility every 120 days. And there's three different phases in your cycle. Ovulation is the, the second phase. It's the main main event that's going to happen every single month. And women could get a period, but they're not ovulating. So if you're just judging every month saying, well, I had a normal cycle, define normal. You know, right. just because you have that, that's the biggest problem with birth control. It suppresses all your hormones. Right. You get this fake cycle at the end of the month and then people think, you know, I, I had a normal, a normal cycle. So testing ovulation, making sure you are ovulating is huge because it can tell so much about your cycle. Dr. Marcia Schaefer from Spring Creek Family Chiropractic, thank you so much as always. Thank you. 
Welcome back to Talk of the Town. My next guest is Nikki Maynard, owner of Nikki's Diapers. Welcome, Nikki. Hi, thanks for having me. And as I understand it, you're gonna be talking to us a little bit about how cloth diapers are becoming a little bit more mainstream. First of all, talk to us a little bit about um, uh, how, how was Nikki's Diapers started? Um, I actually started it 12 years ago. Okay. And with my first son, I was pregnant and we needed to save money and we were very environmental, so we, thought cloth diapers was a good option and being washing them ourselves at home. Well, we lived in Madison, so I thought this should be easy. I can go and find cloth diapers anywhere. And I couldn't, and I was shocked. So I bought them online and I um, started using them myself. And then I went to baby groups and people kept asking me, what are those? How do you use them? Those are so neat. And after telling people exactly where to buy them online, about three times a light bulb went on and was like, well, I should maybe sell these myself. So I started with one brand and just started selling them out of my basement and it grew from that into a warehouse, into a store, into, so we wow. currently have a location in New Glarus, which is our large warehouse. Um, and we sell internet, you know, we have a large internet site, nickysdiapers.com. Sure. Um, and we manufacture several brands. And then we also have a store on the west side of Madison off Old Sock. Awesome. Road. So this is something that really just kind of gained some momentum by itself, it sounds it like. It did. I never planned it. I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I never planned on right. <laughs> doing anything like this, and it just took a took right. on a life of its own. Right. Um, you know, some of the, our viewers who might be watching uh, might remember cloth diapers from, you know, 30 years ago. I know that uh, I had cloth diapers, actually. And, um, you know, talk to us a little bit about how cloth diapers have changed in the last 30 years yep. or more. What most people think of, they think of a big sheet of fabric, right. and then you pin it on the baby and you pull pants over Not it. directly on the baby. Not on the, the baby. You, <laughs> you pin the diaper on the baby, and then you put rubber pants over. Right. Well, that we still sell, sell that option, which some people still use, but sure. they have totally changed in their more like disposable diapers now. Mm -hmm. So you can see like, here's an example. This sure, is yeah. the best Show bottom diapers. Yeah. This is actually a, um, one we manufacture and it's manufactured mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Hold that up nice and high. There you go. So it has cute little hedgehogs on it. So it, they're one size, so you, mm -hmm. can, you can see it snapped down and it unsnaps into a larger size. So it can fit a baby as small as six pounds up to about 35 pounds. So what it does wow. is this is the waterproof section. You need to have absorbency in it. So we have different size inserts depending on the size of your baby. So sure. I'm going to put a large in it. And all it does is it snaps in and then you put it on a baby exactly like a disposable. So uh -huh. it goes on your baby. And then after they wet, soil, whatever, you can snap out the insert and you can put a new insert in it. Yeah. So you generally get about 24 to 30 inserts and then you get about six to 12 covers. Okay. So you can rotate through the covers. If they soil the cover, you can just wash the cover and then you wash them all together. Very cool. So that's just like one of the easiest systems that we have. And then there's other types. There's ones that look just like disposable diapers, sure, yeah. except you wash it. Like, so it's all one piece and it's nice and soft that's and pulls cool. the wetness away from the baby as does the stay dry on this one. And you just basically put it on your baby like a disposable and they use it and you put it in the wash. And that's, uh, that's got to be great for, um, like, if you take your, your baby to daycare or something like that, because if you took the traditional diapers, right, with, it's cloth diapers with pins, and expected somebody at a daycare to do that, they might not understand right. what they need to do. But that's really very intuitive. Right, and it's, it's very easy to use. And then for daycares, we also have bags, like they're waterproof bags. Um, this is the Planet Wise wet dry bag, and you can put your dry, you know, your clean diapers in the front. And then you put, this is a waterproof section, and you can Very put your cool. dirty diapers when they're dirty, and then this you wash right with yeah. your diapers. So it's super easy. So, you know, you have to buy how many inserts and then how many of these uh, um, different, um, the waterproof, what did you call those? The it's, waterproof? A, it's a waterproof shell or diaper Water cover, you could call shell. it. Waterproof shell. And how much money in the long run would you say that that would save a person? You can save. It, it's about... Um, $1,000 on your first baby, you would save. So cloth diapers cost anywhere to get started about 200 to $500. And that can range. You can spend less if you do a lesser version of a diaper because as they get fancier, the more expensive they tend to sure. get. Um, and people get addicted to it and they have really expensive diapers and they want certain prints and styles and right. they collect them. And it's really, it's actually really fun and interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and you can spend more than five hundred dollars, so it's going to cost. You're going to save about a thousand dollars if you just did the average per um, for the first child, and then after that, you can actually resell your cloth diapers, which you wouldn't think, but people right. resell them, so you can recoup some of that sure. two to five hundred dollars, and you can um, then on your next baby, you don't have to buy 
cloth diapers. So the next baby is essentially free. You might have to buy a few things. So third base, so you can see how you can save $1,000 on your first and then even more on your second and third. Very cool, mm -hmm. very cool. Well, Nikki, I would love to know exactly what, are the, what is the process for washing these, but unfortunately we are out of time. So viewers are going to have to call you up or go, call, to your website go to the website. You can see it on there. Out more. Yeah. Well, Nikki Maynard, owner of Nikki's Diapers, thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Don't go away. When we come back, we're going to talk about furniture and consignment. It's here on Talk of the Town. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. My next guest is Leah Hernandez, who is the owner of the Cozy Home over on Monona Drive. Leah, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm excited to hear what you have to talk about today because not only do you do consignment furniture, but you also have a staging business. So um, first of all, talk to us a little bit about what exactly is um, consignment furniture. Sure, consignment furniture is us selling gently used uh, quality items for people. And it could be something like a couch. It could also be something as small as a table lamp. Uh, anything that's in good quality, good shape, that you don't have a use for anymore, we can sell it for you. And when you say gently used, I mean, you really mean gently used. It's not, this is not an antique store, in other words. Correct. We do take pieces from a variety of time periods, but it's all got to be stuff that is functional for people. Sure. It's not, um, it's not a thrift store in the fact that we take donations, we pick through um, and take the best quality pieces we can find. Yes, absolutely. And so um, if someone has, uh, or I should actually uh, talk a little bit about the consignment and what types of items you take. So what types of items do you actually take for consignment? Uh, we take all kinds of furniture, couches, bookcases, table lamps, uh, coffee tables, dining tables, but we also do some smaller items, decor items, uh, wall art, vases, artificial plants, uh, sure. those type of items. Sure. And I imagine that um, you know you get a lot of folks who are coming to you saying, hey, would you take this item? Would you take that item? And you probably can't accept every single item that comes through your doors or the, every single pitch that comes through your doors. So uh, how, how do you determine what items that you accept and what items you can sell? And how can uh, viewers who might be interested in selling something through the Cozy Home find out more? Sure. Um, for us, our space is limited, sure. so what we take could be limited on how many items we currently have in the store. Uh, for instance, if we have five couches in the store and you have a couch, you may have to just wait to bring it in. Sure. Um, as far as finding out whether it's something we would take or not, you can contact us anytime. We're open seven days a week, but uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are our main days of taking consignments in. Uh, smaller items you can bring in. We will go through on the spot and give you an answer. Larger items, we would prefer to see a picture first, either via email or on your phone or camera, and we can uh, discuss bringing the larger pieces in at a different time. Sure, sure, that all makes sense. So um, switching gears just a little bit, I'm uh, excited to hear about the staging business that you guys do. Can you talk to us about your staging business? Sure, our staging business is focused on helping people uh, organize their space particularly for sale, if their home is for sale and they need some help um, getting it on the market, getting it ready to sell, that is our specialty. Uh, we also do consultations, so a staging consultation would consist of us coming out and giving you all the tools to get your space ready, but our main staging is us supplementing either your current furnishings or an empty house with furnishings that we have to make it sale ready. So you'll actually take some of the items, for example, if somebody decided that, you know, I, I'm already going to move out of this house, it's going to be an empty house that I'm selling, and they want to stage it because that helps it to sell faster, you'll actually take items out of your store and stage the home from items from the cozy home. Exactly. With our inventory, we're able to uh, fit the house perfectly, yeah. but we also are able to work really quickly because we have the inventory on site. So. Yeah, very cool, mm -hmm. very cool. So uh, are there any other services that you guys provide then besides consignment or staging? Sure, we do also offer decorating services. So if you just need help with a room or if you're just not able to put it all together, we would certainly come out and help you do that. Uh, we sell a mineral-based paint line in our store that's perfect for furniture. So if you have something you want to rehab, we've got paint there for that. 
And we also do uh, custom painting for people. If they have a piece that they don't want to monkey with, we will take care of it for them. Um, one other thing that we do is we do also do outright buys. So if someone is moving out of town and they've got a short notice, we would make them an offer on all of their furn furnishings and we would come out and uh, pick it up and take it away for them. So. My goodness, it sounds like you guys are busy. We are busy. We're very busy. Yeah, you have such a, variety, a great variety of services, and it mm -hmm. sounds like a really great store. So it we'll is. So check that out. So, And you should check it out, too. This has been Leah Hernandez, the owner of The Cozy Home over on Monona Drive. Go and check them out. Check out their website. And that's all the time we have for Talk of the Town. We'll see you next time.